Thidwick, The Big Hearted Moose by Dr. Seuss. Up at Lake Winnebago, the far northern shore, lives a huge herd of moose, about 60 or more. They all go around in a big happy bunch, looking for nice tender moose moss to munch. Up at Lake Winnebago, one day they were lunching, just strolling along and enjoying their munching, for the moose moss that day was especially fine, when it happened that Thidwick, the last moose in line, saw a bingo bug sitting, and the bug called out, Hey! It's such a long road and it's such a hot day! Would you mind if I rode on your horns for a way? Of course not, said Thidwick, the big-hearted moose. I'm happy my antlers can be of some use. There's room there to spare, I'm happy to share. Be my guest, and I hope that you're comfortable there. So the bingo bug picked up a nice easy seat, and the moose went on looking for moose moss to eat. Well, an hour or so later, the bug heard a squeak. He heard the small voice of a tree spider speak. I say, said the spider, you've got a fine place. That moose seems quite friendly, has such a nice face. If I got on two, do you think he would mind? Hop aboard, laughed the bug. I think that you'll find that that moose won't object. He's the big hearted kind. I accept, said the spider, with joy and delight. He started a web on the horn to the right. While the spider was spinning, he heard a gay song, and the fresh little zingazoo bird came along. He stopped and he stared and he chirped, well, 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 what a smart place to build, what a great place to dwell. I've been living on trees ever since I was born, but here's something new, why not live in a horn? If there's room there for two, then there's room there for three. There's plenty of room, laughed the bug, and it's free. Thidwick stopped walking. What was all that talking? These guests had caught Thidwick and the moose unawares. Hey, he called out. What goes on up there, upstairs? Just building a nest, sir, the Zingazoo said, and he began yanking hairs at a poor Thidwick's head. He plucked out exactly 204. Don't worry, he laughed. You can always grow more. Then he dozed off to sleep in his fine moose hair nest. This bird, muttered Thidwick, is sort of a pest. But I'm a good sport, so I'll just let him rest, for a host of all must be nice to his guests. Besides, now it's getting quite late in the day, and surely tomorrow they'll all go away. But alas, the next morning, the sun's early light brought Thidwick's sad eyes a most unwelcome sight. Me, my wife, said the bird. I was married last night. And perhaps, by the way, I should mention to you that her uncle is coming to live with us too. You're a very fine host, so I knew you'd be willing. Then the uncle of Woodpecker started in drilling. All Thidwick's friends shouted, Get rid of those pests! I would, but I can't, saw poor Thidwick. They are guests. Yes, indeed, his friends answered, and all of them frowned. If those are your guests, we don't want you around. You can't stay with us because you're just not our sort. And they turned off their backs and walked off with a snort. Yeah. Now the big friendless moose walked alone and forlorn with four great big woodpecker holes in his horn. What holes? whispered Herman, a squirrel who spied him. What holes I had nuts in? Mind if I try them? They're yours, said the woodpecker. Get right inside them. The big-hearted moose runs a public hotel. Bring your nuts, bring your wife, bring your children as well. So the whole squirrel family jumped in, pell-mell. And the very next thing the poor animal knew, a bobcat and a turtle were living there too. Now what was that big-hearted moose going to do? Well, what would you do if it happened to you? You couldn't say scat because that wouldn't be polite. You couldn't shout scram because that isn't polite. A host has to put up with all sorts of guests, because a host above all must be nice to his guests. So you try hard to smile, you try to look sweet, and you just go looking on for moose mass to eat. But now it was winter, and that wasn't easy, for the moose moss gets scarce when the weather gets freezy. That food was soon gone on the cold northern shore of Wake Linabango. There just was no more. So all Thidwick's friends swam away in a bunch to the south side of the lake where there's moose moss to munch. He'd watch the herd leaving and then Thidwick knew he'd starve if he stayed here. He'd have to go too. He stepped in the water and oh, what a fuss. Stop, screamed his guest. You can't do this to us. These horns are our home. You've got no right to take our home to the far distant side of the lake. Be fair, said Thidwick, a lump in his throat. 
We're fair, said the bug. We'll decide this by vote. All those in favor of going say aye. All those in favor of staying say nay. Aye, shouted Thidwick. But then, when he was done, nay, they all yelled. He lost 11 to 1. We win, screamed the guest by a very large score. And the poor, starving Thidwick climbed back on the shore. And then, do you know what those pests did? They asked in some more. They asked in a fox who jumped in from the trees. They asked in some mice. They asked in some fleas. They asked in a big bear. And then, if you please, came a swarm of 362 bees. Poor Thidwick sank down with a groan to his knees. And then came something that made his heart freeze. Bullets came zinging right past Thidwick's face. Guns were bing banging all over the place. Get that moose, get that moose! Thidwick heard a voice call. Fire again, fire again, shoot straight, one and all. We must grab his head for the Harvard Club wall. Then finally they had him. Because of those pests, he had run out of luck. Because of those guests and his horns, he was stuck. He gasped, he felt faint. The whole world grew fuzzy. Thidwick was finished completely. Or was he? Finished? Not Thidwick. Decidedly not. It's true he was in the most terrible spot, but now he remembered a thing he forgot. A wonderful something that happens each year to the horns of all moose and the horns of all deer. Today was the day Thidwick happened to know that his old horns come off so that new ones can grow. So he called to the pests and his horns as he threw them. You wanted my horns? Now you're quite welcome to them. Keep them, they're yours. As for me, I shall take myself to the far distant side of the lake. As he swam Winnebango, he found his old bunch. He arrived just in time for a wonderful lunch at the south side of the lake where there's moose moss too much. And his horns today are where you knew they would be. His guests are still on them, all stuffed as they should be.